In this video I will show you how to play with white against the London system copycat. And if you don't know how to deal with this, it can be really annoying to face this opening, but I will teach you a couple of really interesting variations so you can destroy a black if they try to play this copycat system. So the London copycat system is a way for black to try and defend against the London by just copying your system. So they will also try to create this triangle with their pawns, play the knight here, play the bishop here, and they will just copy all of your moves. And if you don't know what to do against this, and you just end up in a situation like this, for example, bishop here, bishop here, castles, bishop here, bishop here, castles, something like this will be very, very drawish, and there won't really be any chances for white. So what I like to do against this copycat system is after we have reached this position, is to first play knight b to d2. And this will kind of confuse your opponents. They will not know why you play this instead of e3, but they will probably still think that you are going for the London system. So they are going to continue most likely with the move e6. Afterwards, we will immediately play this move c4, leaving the London theory with c3 behind because we want to create an asymmetrical position so that we have some imbalances that we can work with. The imbalances are just differences in our positions. And this pawn move is already our first difference that we are going to start off with. And there are a couple of ways for black to deal with this. Uh, he can always capture. I think most people won't capture this. Most people probably will play c6 for the London triangle, um, which we are going to continue with. But they can also choose to capture this. And I wanted to quickly take a look at this because you should not capture back with this knight. That's not a good idea because you will run into this check. And this check is really annoying. You will have to drop back. Uh, you have to do some exchanges here. I would not recommend that. So if they capture this, just know that you can play this move queen to a4. Queen to a4 giving a check while also attacking this pawn. So black will have to block. Um, they can block with the pawn, they can block with the knight, they can block with the queen. Uh, you can always trade in that case. I think blocking with the knight is probably the most common. And then you can play e3. And we play this just because we want to capture back this pawn, but we don't want to move this knight or this queen a second time. That would be wasting a tempo. So we are going to try to capture this back with the bishop. For example, after they go here, which they can still do, you can play bishop here. They can castle. Uh, something else they can always try is to uh, go in here. But you will realize this doesn't really work because this is still defended by the knight and you can actually put a lot of pressure here and create some problems for black. For example, this variation. Uh, you can take back here. You can also take back here with check first if you want. Check, then check with the queen. And then here, for example, this loses the rook, so the king has to go up. And then afterwards, we're going to take back here. So this variation is really bad for black, but I think you might get this. If they capture here, you will probably uh, eventually go into this variation where they play the knight up, or they will castle, in which case you can also castle. If you play c4, uh, like I said, they will probably protect with uh, c6. Something else they can do that you should also know is what if they play bishop d6? Well, I recommend just capturing this, drawing out their queen, and then we're going to play b3. Most likely you will get b6, and this is going to transpose to what we will take a look at in this video. So the most likely response is c6, and then here our plan is queen b3. And this is crucial to know, and we are going to fight to get a strategically winning position. And I will explain just in a moment what that means. So here we are abusing the fact that this bishop is no longer protecting this b7 pawn. So we are attacking it with our queen, forcing black on the defense, forcing black to make a decision and do something. Uh, the most likely defense you will get is queen b6, after which uh, we are going to push the pawn to c5. There are other options for black, like queen c8, defending, or b6. I will take a look at that afterwards. First, we're going to continue with the main line, which is queen to b6. So after queen to b6, I recommend playing this move c5. And our entire goal here is to force black into this trade. Because if you take a look at this, we are attacking the queen. The queen cannot go back here, of course, because of the bishop. If the queen goes all the way back, we are winning this pawn. If the queen sidesteps, for example, here to try and keep up the defense, we have e4 with a double attack. So the only option for black is to capture, and then we will not capture back with the knight. We're going to capture back with the pawn, and that is the entire idea. 
we are going to create a passed pawn on the queen side, which is something we can try to force in this position. So let's say black develops and we are going to play e3 because we are going to need the light squared bishop here. And that is an important idea to remember to create these double pawns for yourself after the queen exchange. And then we're going to push this way all the way, push this pawn all the way to promotion. For example, bishop e7, we're going to push castles, we're going to push. You don't even need to develop your bishop or castle. All of those move, moves are way too slow. What we want to do is we want to create a passed pawn. So we are going to keep pushing these pawns down the board. Uh, black could always think about stopping us by playing a6, but you have to know this doesn't work because you can just play b5. And of course, this capture doesn't work because this loses the rook and also the game. Uh, and if they capture with this pawn, we can just recapture because this pawn is still pinned. Otherwise, black would lose the rook. So just to show you, if they try to play a6, don't worry, your plan will still work. Let's say they castle. We're going to play b5 trying to break open this position. And you will notice how this dark squared bishop is our most important piece. We want to keep this piece alive because this piece is controlling this b8 square. And that is a crucial square that black would need to defend with his rooks. That is why this bishop is doing an amazing job. And you want to do everything to keep this bishop alive. Um, that is why sometimes a move like knight h5 can be annoying. Uh, if you want to uh, prevent that you can always play a move like h3 in many lines but i would say go for the aggressive play first with a move like b5 and try to really fight for your promotion if they capture you which they most likely will you can always capture back with your light squared bishop and this is when we will develop the bishop and you can see here we already have a pretty amazing position pressure on multiple points really active bishops and we're also threatening in many lines to play this move c6 Let's say white plays a6, we're just going to draw back with the bishop because we still have another b pawn and we can push this one all the way to promotion. Black to move, let's say they play a move like h6 because their plan is of course to go for a g5 and then also get our bishop in trouble. Uh, if they immediately go for your bishop, you can actually always hide the bishop here and that is an interesting concept to keep in mind as well. And if they attack you with a rook, you can always drop back here and that way you can keep your bishop alive, which is really important. You can also play the move h3 to create this new hole for your bishop. So if black ever attacks you, we can always just drop back and still the bishop is sitting here like a sniper looking at this b8 square. And if black is not careful and puts a rook there, of course, we will be able to capture it. And it's easy to miss this bishop from the black side. So bishop h2. Uh, so yeah, rook there doesn't work. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, if they don't go for your uh, bishop because they know you can draw back, they can always try something like rook here. We can castle. And then after we have castle, our main idea will be to push this pawn to promotion still. Of course, black can try out many things. You don't need to know the exact variations. Just know it's fine trading pieces. You don't have to worry about trading pieces as long as you keep this dark squared bishop alive. B4, we are going for the attack. Black can exchange all he wants, doesn't matter, we still have this dark squared bishop. Black comes in with the knight, and then we can double the rooks here. Of course, pushing here is not smart, black can just capture and we don't get anything. So our goal is to first double up, double up here on the A file, and then we will push this pawn, because black will not be able to capture back. Let's say the knight goes here, you can even capture it. Of course, you don't need to capture this, but it's just a good idea to trade off all of these pieces, because we just want to have our dark squared bishop um, here as our final piece. And then we have rook a1. And here we are achieving our goal. We are doubling the rooks on the a file. Of course, if black ever tries to challenge you here, you can just play the bishop to d6 or play the bishop to h2. Just don't trade this bishop. Let's say f6 by black, since black is trying to go for some kind of attack here. And then here we can play this move b5. And of course, capturing this is not a good move because black would just be losing a rook. So black is not able to capture this. And also, of course, pushing doesn't work because we can just capture this for free. And there's really nothing, nothing uh, black can do. Let's say they just move the king and then we're going to play this beautiful move c6. And this is an important concept to know that you want to attack the pawns sideways twice like this. And this is a really interesting position because black loses in every single variation. 
if black captures here which i think they will do because of course here they still loses the rook and if they capture with the rook they also lose the rook if they try to defend they also lose the rook so probably black will capture this and then we are just gonna push this pawn is gonna run in between these two other pawns and he's gonna run to promotion and it's not possible for black to stop this because if black tries to stop it with the rook we can always snipe the rook with the bishop and now we can come in with this rook and we will still be able to promote and there's just nothing black can do of course all of these moves also don't don't work because of our pawn and if black tries to uh, be sneaky for example here i play something like rook a7 you can actually play b6 immediately this rook has to go back and then again this pawn is promoting so that is the variation you can go for and the main idea you have to remember here is to go for this queen b3 uh, push c5 exchange the queens and then your plan is to just push the b pounds down the board and keep your dark squared bishop uh, bishop alive you might have got slightly different variations but if you can remember that you will be fine i also wanted to leave you with some ideas for the other variations so here of course black doesn't have to play queen b6 black also has two other options b6 and queen c8 b6 is something you will probably get especially at the lower levels i would not play this as black because you are weakening this but i think you will get this and against this i recommend going for e3 let's say bishop there and then we play knight to e5 and with knight to e5 we are trying to set up tricks let's say castles bishop e2 you can also play bishop d3 but i will just keep your bishop alive don't exchange too much and here many people will go wrong and play knight to d7 this is of course losing but there is an even better move knight takes f7 knight takes f7 attacking the queen if they capture this attacking the bishop and we basically win a free bishop of course if they see this and they try to not go for this they can always try to play something else like for example um, this move c5 you can still castle if they capture we still have this pawn here to capture back if they capture here we can capture with the knight and all of these positions are really good for white you will be able to put your rooks here uh, push this in some variations also sometimes there are tricks you can play here on the long diagonal so all in all by all a good position for uh, white queen c8 i think this is a bit of a more high level defensive move that you won't see too much but it is possible of course then i would just say go and eliminate this light squared bishop like this and this will create a pretty weird dynamic of course black can also capture back like this but that's uh, pretty terrible because this is weakening the center a lot black will capture back like this most likely and then we can play this special move in the london which is g3 you almost never play this but this is one of those rare situations where you can play this and most of the time you cannot play a move like this for example here because you're kind of getting your own bishop stuck in many lines a black will go for h6 g5 and it's a bit annoying that you have your bishop here it cannot go back but in our line after we have uh, traded this pawn well this g5 push is no longer possible or at least not easy to play from the black side so we can develop the bishop and here we basically have two snipers looking at the enemy queen side uh, seeing to do some damage let's say castles castles and then of course we can activate the rooks and we can play a move like e4 uh, here or we can also be a little bit more careful and first develop this rook and then also play e4 uh, it's already hard to find a move for black black is actually really cramped maybe a5 um, yeah other than that knight b6 maybe uh, and then you have a move like e4 and white is already winning here let's say takes 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 we capture with the bishop we have this position already pretty amazing and many lines we will also break open the center here with pound to d5 and everything is going to fall apart and we will have all of the active pieces and there will be tactics in every single line if you enjoyed this video definitely subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment i love reading all of the comments and i respond to pretty much every comment so leave a like leave a comment and that's it for this video i will see you in the next one bye